Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. Bulldog fans connect with Adrian College TV on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live, to see highlights, plays of the week, and much more. Adrian College Television is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. ACTV's handle is at Adrian College TV on every form of social media. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the Bulldogs, Adrian College TV. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself. Adrian College has once again been recognized for its commitment to engaged experiential education by Colleges of Distinction, a one-of-a-kind guide for college-bound students. While higher education has changed over the past 20 years, Colleges of Distinction's selection process has stayed consistent in accepting only those that adhere to the four distinctions engaged students, great teaching, vibrant community, and successful outcomes. Overlaid in the last few years have been a look into high-impact practices. They believe most critical to the student experience were the kinds of engaging experience that are found at Adrian College. To learn more, please visit adrian.edu. April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Docky, back in August I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I cannot describe to you the gratitude that my fellow students and I have for Adrian remaining open on campus for the duration of the school year. I wanted to take the time to thank the Adrian College community, the faculty, the staff, for allowing us to have as normal of a year as possible in a world that simply did not want that to happen. I look forward to walking across the stage in May knowing that I was still able to enjoy time with my friends and the Bulldog community during my senior year. All the best, Max Birmingham. Class of 2021. Max, you've got to stand up so we can give you a round of applause.
Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. fans connect with adrian college tv on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live to see highlights plays of the week and much more adrian college television is on facebook instagram and twitter actv's handle is at adrian college tv on every form of social media thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the bulldogs adrian college tv Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for a world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? Learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. I'm Matt Kibbe, the current student body president here at Adrian College. I chose AC because the campus simply feels like home. Everywhere I go, I know the amenities are there to help me succeed and get to the next level in my career. If you want to see what Adrian College has to offer, you can schedule an in-person visit at adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Adrian College has dozens of athletics programs and winning is a staple on our campus. We have the culture of winning in and out of the classroom. This is a place where young men and women grow into professionals for life. Are you interested in learning more about the Bulldog experience? Visit adrianbulldogs.com and the Recruit Me tab to be recruited to play your sport of choice today. If you have what it takes, you could be a Bulldog in no time. Adrian College Television would like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Carlton Lodge of Adrian. Carlton Lodge is sponsoring all ACTV broadcasts during the 2021 to 2022 school year. Located at 1629 West Maumee and Adrian, Carlton Lodge offers comfortable rooms and suites at affordable rates. There's also a heated indoor and outdoor pool along with a 24-hour fitness center. Thank you for the continued support toward Adrian College Television. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more.
Adrian College has once again been recognized for its commitment to engaged experiential education by Colleges of Distinction, a one-of-a-kind guide for college-bound students. While higher education has changed over the past 20 years, Colleges of Distinction's selection process has stayed consistent in accepting only those that adhere to the four distinctions, engaged students, great teaching, vibrant community, and successful outcomes. Overlaid in the last few years have been a look into high impact practices. They believe most critical to the student experience were the kinds of engaging experience that are found at Adrian College. To learn more, please visit adrian.edu. April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Docky, back in August I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I cannot describe to you the gratitude that my fellow students and I have for Adrian remaining open on campus for the duration of the school year. I wanted to take the time to thank the Adrian College community, the faculty, the staff, for allowing us to have as normal of a year as possible in a world that simply did not want that to happen. I look forward to walking across the stage in May knowing that I was still able to enjoy time with my friends and the Bulldog community during my senior year. All the best, Max Birmingham, class of 2021. Max, you've got to stand up so we can give you a round of applause.
Good afternoon, everyone. Please join me for an opening prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day you have given us to gather here in celebration of these graduates. Thank you for each and every one of these students and for the accomplishment it represents to walk across this stage and receive their diploma. Thank you for everything you've brought them through to reach this point, for all the long nights studying, the early morning classes, and the busy days full of practices, friends, and learning to become an adult. Thank you for each family represented here today and for their commitment and sacrifices to helping their student reach the point of their college graduation. Thank you for their love, support, and endless encouragement. Thank you for Adrian College and for the faculty, staff, and community that has gathered around us, cheerleading us and stretching us to ensure we made it to this day. Thank you for this beautiful campus we have been fortunate enough to call home and thank you for every cherished memory we made here. Lastly, Lord, we thank you for paving the way to get us here today. Thank you for your abundant faithfulness to us and for the good and beautiful plans you have for each of our lives. Help us to remember in our celebration that each of our accomplishments is for your glory and by your grace alone. We love you, Lord, and we are so grateful to gather here today to celebrate the accomplishments of each one of these graduates. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please remain standing as Kristen Clark sings America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purpled mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Welcome and please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Patrick Farver and I am the chairman of the Adrian College Board of Trustees. On behalf of the board, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome everyone to this celebration where we honor and applaud the accomplishments of the talented and hardworking students. For 164 years, Adrian has been dedicated to graduating successful, civic-minded individuals who will apply their skills and knowledge to improving our world. As we recognize the class of 2023, we reaffirm the importance of this institution's mission and purpose. I speak today from the special perspective of the chairman of the Board of Trustees and a lifelong resident of the city of Adrian. The trustees are volunteers from many professions and backgrounds who give up their time, talent, and resources because they believe Adrian College is a very special place and provides the kind of education that shapes in positive ways the minds and hearts of young adults. As a parent of two children who have graduated from college, I understand the difficulty in sending your child off to pursue the next chapter in their lives and acknowledging they are entering adulthood. As a member of the Board of Trustees, I have firsthand knowledge of the value of an Adrian College education. All of the trustees strive to help make the Adrian College experience world-class and ensure that our graduates are ready and able to pursue whatever their dreams may be. It is therefore with a sense of special pride that I congratulate the class of 2023 on a job well done. And I congratulate and thank all of the parents, family members, faculty, staff, and friends 
who have helped and mentored these students along the way. This is your day also. Congratulations. I am now pleased to introduce the 17th president of Adrian College, Dr. Jeffrey R. Docking. Thank you, Chairman Farber. Today does indeed mark an extraordinary milestone in the lives of these wonderful young people. Students, those of us on stage, join your families in expressing how proud we are of all of you on your graduation today. You have earned the right to be here through endless nights of studying, testing, writing, and dedication to learning. The diploma you will receive symbolizes your efforts and distinguishes you as a highly educated person, learned in the arts and sciences, and prepared for a life of achievement and great accomplishment. My hope is that this wonderful journey, the past four years, has helped you discover your innate talents, made you aware that the most fulfilling life is found in doing good works and serving others, and that happiness is found at the intersection of hard work, ability, talent, and the ingredients that fuel passions and purpose for each one of us. May your lifelong commitment to learning extend far beyond walking across this stage today. Graduates, I congratulate you on a job very well done. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to welcome the student address speaker, Miss Emily German. Emily, Emily is the daughter of Tracy and Christy German and is a resident of Brunswick, Maryland. She is graduating with a Bachelor of Business Administration in Accounting with minors in Economics and English. While attending Adrian College, Emily was a member of the Senior Varsity Synchronized Skating Team where she competed on behalf of, the, of Team USA and was a captain of the varsity sca figure skating team as well. She was a member of Alpha Phi and served on multiple board positions. After graduation, Emily plans on earning her Master's of Science in Accountancy here at Adern College before working full-time at a CPA firm. Welcome, Emily. To my fellow graduates, our families and friends, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, and board of trustees of Adrian College, thank you for joining in the celebration of the achievements of the class of 2023. I'm honored to share with you the joys and triumphs of this extraordinary class and look back on the memories that have transformed us over the last four years. As I prepare for this rite of passage and reminisce on my experience at Adrian College, I cannot help but reflect on the most important lesson I have learned, practicing gratitude. Practicing gratitude is how we find happiness in the life we have built, even when it does not seem to be going our way. It's how we see the beauty in the circle we are surrounded with and the activities in our lives that light a fire within our souls. I learned to look for what I am grateful for every day during the COVID-19 pandemic. I could not fathom how at one moment I had everything I wanted, the team of my dreams, the community I had been searching for, the perfect home away from home. And in the next, I was isolated from this place and fearful that I had experienced the last that graduates experience, but as a freshman. Was that my last in-person class? Was that my last competitive season, the last practice with a full team? Was that my last time on Adrian College's campus? I'm so grateful every day that it wasn't. However, that does not mean that the Adrian College experience of our class and classes afterwards were not impacted by the global pandemic. The class of 2023 experienced many lasts. We were the last class to explore the city of Chicago with the people we'll hold on to forever. We were the last class to show up in the classroom every day before a video call was not an option. We experienced the so-called college experience before the world found solace in computer screens. 
Despite the trials and tribulations that arose from such an event, there are so many firsts, lasts, and in-betweens that are so crucial to being an Adrian College graduate that even a global pandemic could not put them to rest. We're not the last class to attend team dinners at Ritchie, where you lose track of time discussing anything and everything. We're certainly not the last class to get a smile and a kiss from Bruiser walking across campus. We are never going to be the last class to begin our college careers by serving our local community and pursuing our passions. Above all else, come hell or high water, we will never be the last class to come to Adrian College and find a motivated and supportive community of students, faculty, and staff and leave with the skills and tools needed to be inspiring industry leaders and professionals with high hopes and dreams for our bright futures ahead. These memories and moments are why I practice gratitude. Whether it be a great success or a hard lesson learned, the experience of attending Adrian College is a collection of steps that have taken us graduates from the people we were to the people we strive to be. The people and the experiences that we are most grateful for are the ones that will continue us on this upward path for the rest of our lives. In the spirit of gratitude, thank you to my fellow classmates for being a part of this community with me. Whether we spent most of these moments together or barely crossed paths, you contributed your gifts and talents to continue the legacy of this incredible community and to leave the culture of this place even better than we found it. On behalf of the Adrian College Class of 2023, we would like to thank Adrian College for creating the environment to foster our collective learning and growth and recognizing the potential for greatness in every single one of us. Thank you for prioritizing the preservation of the Adrian College experience and for continually seeking to develop the institution's ability to develop both the knowledge in our heads and the care in our hearts. Thank you to our families and friends for being the backbone of our lives through your invaluable love and support. Thank you to all present for sharing in today's incredible milestone and celebration of this class's beautiful journey. Thank you, Emily. Mr. President, I am pleased to present Colonel Harold M. Arrington, MD, candidate for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. The citation will be read by his sister, Dr. Betty Arrington Martin, partner and managing director for Martin Arrington and Martin PC, certified public accountants and consultants. Dr. Betty Arrington Martin is an alumna of the American University and Howard University. We welcome Dr. Arrington Martin to the lectern for her citation. <laughs> President Daki, faculty, honoree, and of course graduates, good afternoon. And for you graduates, this is a great day, congratulations. I have the privilege of participating in a ceremony which honors my brother, Harold Mitchell Arrington, MD. He is someone to whom I have looked for guidance, support, friendship, and love throughout my life, just as we both look to our late older brother, Robin James Arrington, Jr., MD, who was honored by Adrian College in 2006. From childhood, my brother Harold has been an inventor, a scientist, an explorer, and a model train enthusiast. His love of trains sent him around the world to enjoy the experience of riding high-speed trains. However, that was not enough adventure, so he took to the sky and became a private pilot. Dr. Arrington has spent his adult years providing vital health services to girls and women. Over the course of his career, he delivered over 7,000 babies safely into the world. Dr. Arrington also served his country in times of peace and war through his medical service in the Michigan National Guard. Dr. Arrington is a graduate of Adrian College. 
He completed his medical degree at the University of Michigan. Following his medical studies, he completed his residency in obstetrics and gynecology at Wayne State University and entered private practice with his father and older brother. And I must add at this point, what great pride and pleasure it was for my father to have both of his sons join him in his medical practice. And my mother was pretty tickled too. Dr. Arrington is an avid supporter of local charities in Detroit and has been a strong supporter of Detroit Opera. He has demonstrated his loyalty, commitment, support, and pride as a graduate of Adrian College over the many years since his graduation. Therefore, President Aki, in recognition of his long and distinguished career as a physician and for his contributions to the betterment of our community, I am pleased to present Harold Mitchell Arrington for conferral of the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters. Dr. Harold Arrington, by the authority vested in the office of the president by the Board of Trustees of Adrian College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters. And now it is my privilege and honor to welcome Dr. Harold Arrington as our commencement speaker for this afternoon. Dr. Arrington, as you just heard, is a distinguished obstetrician and gynecologist, a philanthropist and an alumnus who has dedicated his life to the service and wellness of others. In addition to his contributions to the medical field, Colonel Harold Arrington has dedicated his life to the service of our great country. As a leader in both the medical field and the military, he was promoted up through the ranks over an era of three, World War, three wars, Vietnam, the Cold War, and Desert Storm. In so doing, Colonel Arrington brought much honor to our country, his family, his alma mater, and to all that know him. Finally, Dr. Arrington and his family are generous and distinguished philanthropists to Adrian College as evidenced by the Arrington Ice Arena, the Arrington Bookstore, and the Arrington Family Scholarship, which has made it possible for literally hundreds of students to attend Adrian College over the past 14 years. We are blessed by his presence here today and privileged to hear him share his wisdom and insights with our students. Dr. Colonel Harold M. Arrington, our 2023 commencement speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian College Board of Trustees, President Docking, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, Adrian friends and family, and most of all, the honored class of 2023. I would never have imagined being asked to give the commencement address when I sat where you were sitting 55 years ago in the graduating class of 1968. I had just turned 21. The world has changed so much since that time. In 1968, the Vietnam War was raging. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in April. Robert F. Kennedy, a leading candidate for president, was assassinated in June. I think the only good news was that the Detroit Tigers managed to win the World Series. <laughs> Go Tigers. As I look over this great campus, I see Feeman, Davis, and Pello Halls, where I lived during my four years I was enrolled at Adrian. We had one phone on each floor for everyone to use to call home, make dates, and order pizza, etc. 
It was turned off at 11 p.m. <laughs> we had one TV in a basement room for all to share. So we all had to agree on which channel to watch. For any research beyond our textbooks, we had to go to Shipman Library. Now, you carry one of these, a 24-hour phone, essentially a 24-hour TV, and a 24-hour encyclopedia with you at all times. You've had to deal with COVID most of your college experience. You have driverless vehicles and artificial intelligence starting to impact your world. So what can an old guy like me tell you about meeting the challenges of life? I'm not a big fan of public speaking, so when President Docking first asked me to give the address, I almost said no. He said, they know your family name on campus, so just tell them who you are and what inspired you in your life. So here it goes, my three basic principles for facing the challenges of life. My brother, sister, and I had a big advantage in life. Let me go into my family history for a moment. As with most African Americans of my age group, I know very little of my family heritage beyond my grandparents, other than surmising there was slavery in my family tree. My father was the youngest of eight children and grew up in West Virginia. His father was a blacksmith for the railroad, which was probably a good job at that time. My father had to go to segregated, black-only schools, but he saw something in his parents and community that inspired him to achieve more. He went to Storr College, an historically black college, where he lettered in four sports and graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree. He then went to Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee, where he graduated with honors and helped pay his way by working through the summer as a dining car waiter on the New York Central Railroad. As a physician, he went to Howard University in Washington, D.C. for his postgraduate medical school training where he met my mother. My mother was an only child who grew up on the farmland of Georgia, orphaned at a very early age. She was taken in by an aunt who died when she was 18. She essentially had no family. Despite these obstacles, my mother was able to get a good education and received a nursing degree from Howard University. As a graduate nurse from Howard, she was an assistant to Dr. Charles Drew, who was known for his research in developing blood banking and transfusion protocols that are still in use today. My parents married and moved north to the less segregated Detroit area to start a family in 1942. They had three late 1940s baby boomer children. They spared nothing to provide a good home and environment for the family. We were brought up in the Episcopal Church and had a good foundation in the difference between good and evil. They were heavily involved in our education, the PTA, our course material. They knew and talked with our teachers and administrators. They made sure the Detroit Public Schools gave us a good education. They took us on trips around the country to visit museums, national parks, and other points of interest. They introduced us to their friends, many of them professionals, doctors, dentists, teachers, attorneys, businessmen, most of whom were African American. We could see that we could be whatever we wanted to be in life. My mother, in addition to her family activities, was a supporter of many civic organizations, such as the March of Dimes. My father established a successful medical practice in the area. He and other black physicians were not allowed on the hospital staff of the major hospital in the 1940s. So I was born in a small African-American hospital in Detroit. He and other black physicians challenged the system, and he was one of the first African-American physicians on the staff of Grace Hospital, now part of the Detroit Medical Center. From this family history, you can understand how my parents came from a meek background to become excellent role models for us. They provided us with life, an endless abundance of love, 
the gift of education, a sense of responsibility, an appreciation of our heritage and culture, and happy and fulfilling childhoods. When my brother and I helped with the expansion of Shipman Libraries 20 years ago, we were able to honor them by hanging their portrait on one of the walls where it's still on display today. So pick good role models. Two, apply yourself to every task you undertake to the best of your ability. From a young age, my father would not say that a certain grade was bad. Instead, he would tell me that if I had applied myself, I could have done better. He was usually right. It's a simple principle. Whatever task you undertake, do the best you can. You will feel good about yourself. As an obstetrician, I became known as the pusher. As a faculty member, member I would supervise the resident physicians as they managed patients in labor. Often a resident would come to me and say, there was a young mother, usually with their first child, stuck at nine centimeters, the baby's head in sight, but in my experience, all women are tired out by this point in labor. According to the resident, they are ready for a C-section. You mothers out there know what I'm talking about. I got my reputation by getting right next to the mother's faces and telling them I was gonna be with them for every push until they delivered their baby. As the residents put it, I would use my military bearing to motivate the mothers to gain that extra strength <laughs> to push the babies out. <laughs> it worked more times than not. The mothers would always thank me the next day that I'd been tough on them, but that made them endure the pain and push harder. So apply yourself. Push harder. Three, plan to be adaptable and enjoy whatever life brings you. When I graduated in 1968, I had a military deferment until I completed medical school. I had no particular desire to go into the military. However, upon completing medical school in 1972, the Vietnam War was still ongoing and there was still a military draft for doctors. I wanted to complete my four years of training in obstetrics and gynecology without interruption. So I decided to join the National Guard for six years and do my medical training while doing my military training one weekend per month and two weeks in the summer. After six years, I completed my medical training and was in practice. The war was over and I was advancing in rank and I was used to the military routine, so I decided to stay in the National Guard. Well, fast forward to late 1989. The Berlin Wall came down. The Cold War was over, so I felt it would be easy to stay in and retire in 1992 with 20 years in service. Unfortunately, Saddam Hussein and President George H.W. Bush had different ideas for my future. Iraq invaded Kuwait and the United States led a coalition to force Iraq to get out. National Guard hospitals units were activated for the first time since World War II. So just after Thanksgiving 1990, I was off to Fort McCoy, Wisconsin to prepare to go to the war zone. We trained on our equipment until one week before leaving when our orders completely changed. They took away our medical equipment and assigned me to command 300 medical American medical personnel at a Saudi Arabian military hospital that did not have enough staff to function. It was up to me and my staff to work out the details with the Saudi staff. So a week later, in January 1991, I found myself in the Saudi Arabian desert at King Fahd Military Medical Complex outside Dahran. Most of the staff had left for their home countries for the war, so there were very few people at the hospital. We had to set up to staff the emergency room, operating rooms, and have up to 400 beds available for casualties. Because of the size of our facilities, I was assigned additional personnel, including five neurosurgeons from Massachusetts and staffing for an entire burn unit from Texas. The war started five days later, and we started getting casualties. 
a missile struck an American unit housed near Dahran, and it was the largest mass casualty event on an American unit for the war. My hospital received and cared for over 100 victims. Late in the war, I had an unannounced visit from a colonel one day from headquarters in Riyadh. When I asked him how the four-hour drive was, he told me he had a military jet at his disposal. I knew right then that he was very important. He was in charge of all medical operations for Desert Storm. He had come to tell me that our hospital was one of two selected to handle all the wounded enemy prisoners of war, EPWs, because of our record of care for casualties and because we had many translators available. It would be my responsibility to provide for all the medical needs of the prisoners of war and to arrange for their discharge back to the Iraqi army or transfer to an Iraqi hospital. He was assigning a detachment of 125 military police to watch over the prisoners and a contingent from the International Red Cross to negotiate directly with Iraq for the return of their soldiers. My hospital could not go home until all the EPWs were discharged. Well, we got busy caring for almost 800 EPWs. I met with the International Red Cross, Iraqi military, and medical personnel to arrange for their discharge or transfer. In the process, our hospital took care of more military and civilian casualties, about 1,000, than any other military hospital in the war zone. I had to adapt almost every day I was deployed. Near the end of my time there, I had 500 American personnel under my command. One day I went to my office and I had, and I had my superior, a colonel, a lieutenant colonel, a major, a captain, a lieutenant, a warrant officer, and a member of the International Red Cross and the Saudi commander all waiting to see me. I asked my sergeant what was going on. He just said, they all need to talk to you, sir. So enjoying myself a little, I said, I guess that means I'm important. He said with a smile, yes, sir, you are important. So I had adapted to a totally unexpected situation, 6,000 miles from home, and was enjoying it a little bit. So what has inspired me to face the challenges of life? One, pick good role models. I use my parents as an example. But anyone who has high standards in life can be a role model for you. Set your goals high. Two, apply yourself to do the best at any task you undertake. This will help you with your leadership by inspiring, inspiring those around you. Push harder. Three, as you go through life, be kind to others. Listen to others. Use your common sense. But be ready to adapt to new challenges, as life has challenged me to give this commencement address today. I even enjoyed it a little. <laughs> In the military, when a commander sends a soldier on a tough mission, he will sometimes say, make me proud. So as you go through life, make your family proud. Make your friends proud. Make Adrian College proud. And you be proud to be a graduate of Adrian College. It's a good day to be a Bulldog. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you, sir. This part of commencement is considered one of the most important traditions at Adrian College, dating back to 1875, when seniors presented a shepherd's cane to the junior class as a symbol of achievement and transfer of power. In 1891, graduating classes began tying an inscribed ribbon with graduates' names onto the cane. This is the inspiration for the academic vision at Adrian College known as the Ribbons of Excellence. 
In 1991, we incorporated the current ceremony into commencement exercises. It is my pleasure to present the 2023 Kane Ceremony participants. Maria Kucha, se Senior Class President. Samantha Bird, Senior Class Vice President. Emma Lavelle, Junior Class President. Ryan Ivina, Junior Class Vice President. President Docking, on behalf of the class of 2023, we have chosen to have our gift go towards the Shipment Library Enhancement Project. The class of 2023 believes that our gift will add an important facility on Adrian College's campus. We hope our gift will benefit the hundreds of students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Students, on behalf of Adrian College's faculty, staff, students, and alumni, we are grateful for the class's 2023 generous gift to Enhance Shipman Library, a place where collaboration, innovation, and study can continue to thrive. We accept this gift in recognition of your time here at Adrian College. Thank you, students. This shepherd's cane, symbolic of leadership, is our link with the past, for it bears the colors and names of past Adrian College graduates. We are proud to join them by attaching the class colors of 2023. We now entrust this heritage to the class of 2024, represented by junior class president Emma Lavelle and vice president Ryan Avina, and witnessed this day by honored graduates, students, faculty, staff, families, and guests. Thank you. The class of 2024 accepts this symbol of leadership and the responsibility to live up to the ideals represented by the ribbons of excellence. We extend our congratulations to the graduating seniors and wish them Godspeed in the years ahead. And now I am pleased to introduce a very special part of the commencement exercises, a letter to parents and family read by a graduating senior. As we all know, the journey through college is fraught with excitement and doubt, fun, challenge, hesitation, fear, and ultimately triumph through the granting of degrees today. We know that today would never arrive for most of the graduates without you, their parents, supporting them along the long road of undergraduate education. Parents and other family members, such as spouses and children, play such a critical role in students' journey through college. We feel it is appropriate to select a student to speak on behalf of their classmates to express appreciation for your support during this journey. Today's letter is being read by Helena Mazzarella. Helena is the daughter of Claire and James Mazzarella and is a native of Fairport, New York. Helena is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English with a minor in journalism. While attending Adrian College, Elena was a member of the senior synchronized skating team for four years and the intercollegiate figure skating team as well. Elena plans on going to graduate school in the fall, furthering her education in English. Please join me in welcoming Elena. is a letter to my family. To the family I physically left behind four years ago, but who has, despite the distance, remained by my side. And to the newest members of my family, whose love and support is unwavering, although our time together at Adrian College is fleeting. As an English major, I see no point in acknowledging the scientific limitations that commonly surround the boundaries of family. 
biologically defined or not, I know who my family is. To those sitting in the audience, I invite you all to take a brief moment and think about your family as well. If you are having a more difficult time reflecting on those who make up your families, I want you to thank yourself and know that I am proud of your strength and ability to withstand all that has affected the journey to your degree. Now, as I proceed, I want to address each person who crossed the minds of our graduating seniors sitting in the audience a few moments ago. On behalf of the class of 2023, thank you. Thank you to our parents and guardians, the most altruistic beings on our planet. Speaking from experience, raising a child is no easy feat. Although I've never had to raise another human being as the child in this scenario, I am well aware of some of the things I put my parents through. <laughs> Simply progressing through the natural but no less difficult stages of our lives is sure to bring a mix of emotions. And while 13 years separate our first day of kindergarten and our college move-in day, I am sure I am not alone in that the two occasions shared strikingly similar characteristics. For many, both involved not only a tearful remembrance of the moments that led to the occasion, but also a celebration of the exciting, unknown opportunities of the future. You traveled, some a longer distance than others, and set out to drop your child off at what would become their home for the next four years. Although typing XO on a smartphone became more normal than physically wrapping your arms around us, you were still right by our sides. We felt your support as you sent care packages, texted photos of our pets, called to check in, and taught us various basic skills via FaceTime. Then when we came home for break, you treated us like local celebrities, cooking us your favorite meals and sending us back to school with a pile of clean laundry. However, it is what you did not do that truly had the most profound impact. You allowed us to forge our own paths, experience things both good and bad, make our own decisions, and become who we are today. Upon entering college, we were the product of who you taught us to be. While your lessons and guidance will never cease, you allowed us to develop who we are, a combination of what we have been taught and what we continue to learn for ourselves. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to grow as individuals while trusting those who have entered our family to help along the way. Thank you to the roommates, friends, teammates, and peers who, although we have only known each other for four years, it seems impossible to think about being surrounded by anyone else in the coming weeks. We celebrated each other's accomplishments, became each other's biggest cheerleaders, and never let each other struggle alone. College has been called the most formative years of our lives. I'm not sure if that is true or not yet, and I think it is different for each individual person. But I can say for certain that these last four years have included both the most amazing and most difficult moments of my life. One constant, however, is the support of my friends through it all. Thank you to the faculty who, through your guidance, knowledge, and compassion, shaped who we are as individuals both inside and outside the classroom. Thank you to the professors who, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, never saw our faces but always knew our names. You made us feel valued, worthy, and capable of achieving anything we put our minds to. You had the confidence in us when at times we did not have the confidence in ourselves. You led with passion, inspiring us as we transition into the next phase of our lives. Thank you to the administration who cultivated a supportive learning environment, where you led by example in teaching us the value of hard work. As graduates, we've been given the tools to care for humanity in the world, learn throughout a lifetime, think critically, cross boundaries and disciplines, and develop creativity, which will infinitely serve our leadership post-graduation. It is impossible to thank everyone who makes up our AC family. From the Sodexo workers who know what we want for dinner before we even order, to the campus safety officers who've ensured our safety over the past four years. The boundaries surrounding family are limitless. Thank you to our family members who supported from afar, those who recently entered our lives and everyone in between. 
Together, you have each played an integral role in helping us achieve this momentous milestone. While it is only our name on the diploma, this accomplishment would not have been possible without the unwavering support of our family. Therefore, on behalf of the class of 2023, thank you. Thank you, Helena. Today we are proud to confer Master of Art, Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, and Master of Science degrees to 33 deserving and accomplished students in criminal justice, sport management, curriculum instruction and assessment, general business, healthcare administration, accountancy, and athletic training. Will the graduate students please rise? Mr. President, it is my pleasure to present the candidates for graduate degrees to you at this time. Each candidate has completed all the requirements of the Master of Art, Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, and Master of Science degrees as specified by Adrian College. By the authority vested in the office of the President by the Board of Trustees of Adrian College, I hereby confer upon these candidates the degrees of Master of Arts in Criminal Justice, Master of Arts in Sports Management, Master of Business Administration in General Business, Master of Business Administration in Healthcare Administration, Master of Education in Curriculum, Instruction and Assessment, Master of Science in Accountancy, and Master of Science in Athletic Training with all of the attendant rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors. Will the graduates please come forward to be hooded by Dean Christine Nags and their faculty advisor. The graduates will then receive their diploma and congratulations from President Docking. McGregor John Adams, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. <laughs> Jessica Ryan Anderson, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. Grant Patrick Bateson, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. Kendall Everett Bellamy, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. Hunter Ashley Dawn Susan Bosher, hooded by Dr. Cedric Hero. <laughs> Ryan Dietrich Boyd, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. Autumn Joy Burgo, hooded by Professor Nathan Getting. <laughs> Thank you. 
McKenna Marie Crowley, hooded by Dr. Tina Claiborne. Robert Maurice DeBold, hooded by Dr. Zavin Nazarishan. Derek James Duvall, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. Gannon Harrison Eichmann, hooded by Dr. Zavin Nazarishan. <laughs> Giovanni James Esquivel, hooded by Dr. Cedric Hero. Allison J. Harry, hooded by Dr. Tyler Harris. <laughs> Hannah Marie Heller, hooded by Dr. Tina Claiborne. David Elton Herrig, hooded by Professor Donna Baker. On, yeah. Yeah. Kylie Elizabeth Horn, hooded by Dr. Tyler Harris. Nicholas Adam Johnson, hooded by Professor Donna Baker. Nathan William Lake, hooded by Dr. Zavin Nazarishan. Erica Ann McDonald, hooded by Professor Kathy Conway. <laughs> Alex C. McNamara, hooded by Professor Nathan Getting. Allie Gretchen Morinville, hooded by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. <laughs> Sean Michael Newen, hooded by Professor Donna Baker. Caitlin Nicole Probelski, hooded by Dr. Daniel Trailer. <laughs> Brian Connor Schilentz, hooded by Dr. Scott Westfall.
Trevor Earl Usher, put in by Dr. Charles Reed. Andrea Louise Vidusic, put in by Dr. Tina Claiborne. Jessica Rose Von Ruden, put in by Professor Donna Baker. Carson Thomas Wipert, put in by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. Cecilia Grace Werner, put in by Dr. Cheryl Nutter. <laughs> Jacob M. Witt, put in by Dr. Zavin Nazarishan. Dylan James Zelko, put in by Professor Donna Baker. Matthew Zelko, put in by Professor Donna Baker. Please give these students a very well-deserved round of applause. Congratulations. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees please rise? <clears throat> Mr. President. It is my pleasure to present the candidates for baccalaureate degrees to you at this time. Each candidate has successfully completed all requirements for the appropriate degree as specified by Adrian College or will complete the remaining requirements by August or December of 2023. By the authority vested in the office of the president by the Board of Trustees of Adrian College, I hereby confer upon those candidates who have completed their requirements the degrees Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Music Education, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Social Work with all of the attendant rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors. Will the graduates and candidates please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates and candidates will now receive congratulations and their diplomas from President Docking, a gift from the Alumni Association, and have a chance to pet the college mascot, Bruiser, for good luck. <laughs> Students. <laughs> Students, after you receive your diploma, please turn your tassels from right to left, signifying a graduate status. And if the families of the candidates are present, we ask that you stand as your graduate received their diploma.
Sarah Michelle Aby. Rashid Saheed Hamid Agali. Zachary D. Altman. Jenna Lynn Anhauser. Molly Jane Armstrong. Paige Ann Arvo. Cameron J. Babiak. Zachary Joseph Bagazi. Reed Keeley Barr. Bradley David Baldus, magna cum laude. Carter Michael Ball. Noah Wayne Kim Bonnie. Dallas Curtin Berenger. Lillian Lorraine Bumhart, summa cum laude. Ronald C. Beatty. Derek D. Bell II. Abigail K. Bella, summa cum laude. <laughs> Joe Bruce Benbraham. <laughs> Trevor Patrick Benoit. Caitlin Grace Bergman, summa cum laude. Samantha Renee Bird, summa cum laude. Megan Joyce Blair, summa cum laude. Zoe Lynn Blanchard, cum laude. Dakota J. Bone. Matthew Baruki, summa cum laude. Ian Thomas Brackney. <laughs> Nolan W. Briggs, magna cum laude. <laughs> Austin Edward Brining. Haley Brielle Brower, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Sue Brown, presented by her mother, Kim Brown. <laughs> Joshua Lee Brown, presented by his mother, Kim Brown.
Victoria Lynn Bukowski, summa cum laude. Kaylee Marie Cataret. Ryan Thomas Cadwallader. Seth Melvin Kane, summa cum laude. Brett Eugene Carlisle, magna cum laude. Faith Ann Carpenter. Travis Allen Carson, summa cum laude. Summer Cavazos. Zaria Caver. <laughs> James Coleman. <laughs> Sophia Alexandra M. Cologne. Stephen Cope. <laughs> Emily Ann Cousineau, magna cum laude. Danielle Marie Kraft, cum laude. Kaylee Jane Craig, summa cum laude. Courtney Geraldine Crawford, summa cum laude. Maria Renee Kucha, summa cum laude. Ryan Eugene Cuddy. <laughs> Caleb Michael Dockenhaus. <laughs> Alec Benjamin Damon. Eve Marguerite Davis, summa cum laude. <laughs> Haley Nicole DeChalk, cum laude. <laughs> Matteo Gotano Di Giulio, cum laude. <laughs> Aspen Marie Dodge. Anna Lee Ray Dolce, summa cum laude. Jonathan D. Duval, magna cum laude. Shaylin Rose Eagleston. K. 
Capel, C Caleb, Michael, Ellis. Kyle Thomas Emery. Avery Margaret Engel, summa cum laude. Ty Wyatt Enns. Garth Laverne Escott. Bria Mary Fuchuk. Thank you. Daniel Albert Fielding, summa cum laude. William J. Fierro, Jr. Emma Claire Diane Fogarty, summa cum laude. Phoenix Aleem Fowler. Shelby Jean Frank, summa cum laude. Samantha Nicole Franzmeyer, summa cum laude. Riley Lynn Fraser. Aiden Lee French, cum laude. Vasiliki D. Gargasolas. Emily Elizabeth German, summa cum laude. Tyler Dewan Guillory. Lori Elizabeth Gerbach, summa cum laude. Aaron Michael Glovier, magna cum laude. Sophie Alexa Goldberg. Jamie Grace Francis Gorman, summa cum laude. Gunther Wyatt Gottschalk, magna cum laude. Elena Alexandra Gould. Kaylee Hensley Guzzi, summa cum laude. Katie M. Hamen, summa cum laude. Cassidy Morgan Hampton, magna cum laude. Julia Katie Hatley.
Molly Marie Anna Hayes, cum laude. Jamie Faye Heine, magna cum laude. Mika Hinkle de Groot, summa cum laude. Whitman Logan Hopper, cum laude. Kirsten Daniel Horney. Joelle Olivia Howard. Gabrielle Kiera Jax. Alex Roland Johnson, summa cum laude. Nellums. Jamie Ellen Nichols. Sheldon Stephen Joseph Nolan, magna cum laude. Olivia Grace Nortley, cum laude. Andrew Allen Nummer. Mason James Obeldobel. Colin Bradley O'Neill, cum laude. Brett Brady Mackenzie Osborne. Henrik Leonard Carl Overwall, summa cum laude. Martha Lynn Owen, cum laude. Alan John Owens. Jordan David Papadellis. Jillian Patricia Park, summa cum laude. Caitlin Ann Parsons. Zachary Charles Perry. Jacob Matthew Peterson, magna cum laude. Austin Edward Petrie. Ethan Samuel Pfeiffer, cum laude. Jessica Martha Philpot, summa cum laude. Matthew James Pillow. Ryan Michael Pino. Kyle Stephen Plesha. Yeah. John Wesley Plumley the third. Yeah. 
Brian Richard Politi, magna cum laude. Bethany Lynn Posey, summa cum laude. Jocelyn Elizabeth Potter, magna cum laude. Joseph Quigley. Itaris Ramirez. Trent Nicholas Rector. Kyle David Riser, summa cum laude. Griffin Anthony Raynard, summa cum laude. Phoenix Ray Richardson. Jaden Lee Riley. Antonio O. Rios. Ashley Deanne Rhoda, Roder, magna cum laude. Taylor Claire Ross, magna cum laude. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Alexis Michelle Rudder. Reginald Race Ryder. Ashley Lillian Risner. Zachary Peyton Salters. Justin Scott Sarka. Jacob Michael Sauber. Maxwell Dale Scanlon. Lauren Nicole Schneider, cum laude. Cody Wallace Schramm, summa cum laude. Hunter Andrew Schramm, summa cum laude. Brianna Charlotte Schumann. Jillian R. Shuddy, summa cum laude. Morgan Nicole Sievolt. Benjamin Richard Sigmund, summa cum laude. Taylor Brianne Semp, summa cum laude. Connor James Sheridan. Maya Sue Shiree, magna cum laude. C. 
Samuel Drake Shoemaker. Cody North Shook. Spencer Robert Silman, cum laude. Tristan Connor Slagle. Patrick McGowan Smith. Tanner Jacob Smith. Trinity Lanny Smith. Kevin D. Smitherman. Dominic Glenn Somerville. Iris Catherine Sorrell, summa cum laude. Lindsay Ray Sorrell. Samuel Dwayne Spade, magna cum laude. Dante Spagnuolo, summa cum laude. Sarah May Sparrow. Chase Crawford Spencer, magna cum laude. Holly Elizabeth Sperling. Megan Renee Staley. George Nicholas Stevens, summa cum laude. Anna Bellen Strandborg, summa cum laude. Shea McKenzie Stroven, summa cum laude. Nicholas Anthony Tallarico. Austin Allen Tapley, magna cum laude. Laura Carolyn Tapp, summa cum laude. Abigail M. Taylor. Hannah L. Taylor. Brooke Elizabeth Terry, summa cum laude. Alex Christopher Thackeray, summa cum laude. Parker Stephen Thiel, cum laude. Emily Kate Thompson. Joseph Lee Toth. Yeah. 
Rhonda K. Tuberville, cum laude. Alexandra Faye Turi, summa cum laude. Gabriel G. Tucson, magna cum laude. Zoe Renee Tyson Knight. Gabrielle K. Udell, summa cum laude. Lexi Ray Usulowski. Joshua James Vaculik. Isabel Juanita Valdez, summa cum laude. Aaron Isaiah Valentine. Jeremy Christopher Van Epps, magna cum laude. Ty Van Horn. Grace Ann Van Kirk, summa cum laude. Braden Rock Van Orden. Alexandra Claire Vatrol, summa cum laude. Hunter Christopher Wint. Griffin Douglas Worth, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kaylee Jean Whelan, cum laude. Peyton Michael Weber. Brennan Scott Williams. Charisma Leanne Williams, summa cum laude. Anthony J. Willoughby. Elizabeth Mary Kausworth. Dominic Randy Yamarino. Mary Catherine Yannick. Peyton Christine Young. Please congratulate the graduates with a well-deserved round of applause. And graduates, 
Graduates and seniors, there are many people who have helped you arrive at this point in your lives today. This is the appropriate time for you to thank them. Will the graduates please rise and with a round of applause recognize your family members and friends who have helped you along the way. Finally, students, students, please remove your tassels and on the count of three, you will throw your mortar in celebration of your accomplishment. Ready? Okay. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. After, after we sing the alma mater and receive the benediction, the faculty and students will recess, celebrating the tradition of the faculty gauntlet which permits students and faculty to offer expressions of thanks and farewell. A reception for our graduates will be held on the terrace just over in front of Kane Student Center. All guests of our graduates and the Adrian College faculty and staff are welcome to attend. Will the audience please rise and join us in singing the alma mater? You will find the words in your program on page 37. Victorious, crowned with eternal youth, boast of son and pride of daughter, loved by all who know thy Lord, dear old Adrian, alma mater, God be with thee. <laughs> Please join me in a closing prayer. Dear Lord, as we prepare to leave here today and enter into the next chapter of our lives, let us go reminded that it is the Lord your God who goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid. Lord, let us step into the unknown with confidence and boldness, knowing that our God is faithful and desires to write a beautiful story with each of our lives. We thank you for all you have already done, Lord, and we praise you for all you still have left to do. Faithful you have been and faithful you will be. We love you and we trust you, Father. Help us to receive these words of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The bell tower will now toll 23 times for the class of 2023. <laughs>
April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Dockey, back in August I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I cannot describe to you the gratitude that my fellow students and I have for Adrian remaining open on campus for the duration of the school year. I wanted to take the time to thank the Adrian College community, the faculty, the staff, for allowing us to have as normal of a year as possible in a world that simply did not want that to happen. I look forward to walking across the stage in May knowing that I was still able to enjoy time with my friends and the Bulldog community during my senior year. All the best, Max Birmingham, class of 2021. Max, you've got to stand up so we can give you a round of applause. For those of us on this stage, today is one of the most exciting days of the year. We love to see the wonder and anticipation in the eyes of our new students as all of you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define the years ahead.